Okay, this is part two of the guessing game. So in part one, if you haven't seen it, go check out that video. But up to this point, we have three levels, easy, medium, or hard. And when we click play, it will disable these buttons and enable these two. And we also built out the placeholders for the stats, for total wins and average score, as well as the leaderboard. So today we'll create a function called make guess. So when we click this button, it will give them a message saying too high, too low, or correct. It'll update the stats and it'll also update the leaderboard. So instead of doing all this in one function, we'll also make two helper functions for um, updating the score and resetting the board. So let's start with make guess. So we already have the, the kind of the shell of make guess. So here we have make guess, which is going to be called by the guess button. And the first thing we want to do is we want to get the value of that placeholder. And again, the placeholder's name was guess, but that's the whole HTML element. If we want just the value, we have to say dot value. So let's create a variable for that. We'll call it let, we'll say user guess to differentiate it from guess. So user guess equals, and then for this one, um, we can use the value of that guess. So since it's stored as an ID, we can just simply say guess.value. And the other thing we want to do is since this is a number, we're going to want to turn this into a number using parse int. And the nice thing with that is if it's not a number, it will say not a number. And then the next thing we can do is we can check to see if they entered a valid number. So if they entered nothing or if they entered NAN, which would be a string, then we can ask them to enter something else. So if, and then there's an existing method called is not a number with the capital N's, and we can look at that user guess. And we also want to check to see if that user guess is equal to an empty string, meaning they did not put anything in there. And if that is true, and if this is only a one line if statement, you do not need braces. So we could say msg dot inner HTML, which would rewrite the message that currently says guess a number one through 10. And we could say something like invalid guess a number one through, and then whatever the current level is, which is stored in a global variable. And if they get out of that, then we can just update the score. Um, I actually will add some braces to this because I'm going to need another line. Because if they do not um, do a valid answer, we don't want to continue on. We want to end that function. And then when they click the button again, we can run it. So to get um, back to where you called this from, you can simply use a return statement, which basically ends that function. So if it's not valid, you want to ask them again. And you don't want to do a loop here because we will check this every time they check the button. If you do a loop, you're going to be stuck in that loop forever because there's no chance for them to update this. So if they do get out of there, then we can say, okay, they made a valid guess. So we can update that variable that keeps the score, which is score. So score plus plus will work. And then we're ready to check to see if it's too high or too low. So we could say if the user guess is less than the actual answer, then what do we want to do? We can say msg dot inner HTML equals too low. And then we can say guess a number one through whatever level they're on again. And since in this game they can also be correct, we want to say an else if to connect the too high or too low because the else can be everything else, which means they won. So this one will be user guess um, is greater than the answer. And for this one, we'll say msg dot inner HTML equals too high. Guess a uh, number one through the level. And if that's not right, if it's not too high or too low, it would have to be correct. So we can do an else statement. We're going to have more than one line here, so we'll use braces. And then we could say msg dot inner HTML. And then we can say correct. 
you win. It took, and then we can say how many tries it took, which will just be that variable score that we were updating. It'll take that many tries. So that will um, give you a message. Um, it won't update the stats and it won't enable these buttons again, but we can try this out by running it and see if we get any mistakes. So if we hit play, the answer is one. You can guess two, it says too high. Technically you could answer zero if you wanted to. Um, that is invalid for a reason, which we'll have to look at in a second. And then if we get the right answer, it says correct. So why is zero invalid? So here we use parse int, we grab the value. Now, if it's not a number, zero is a number, so let's check that out. That's interesting. So zero is not working, so we'll have to check that out. Um, and then we can try to enter a string, and I'll say invalid. All right, so we'll come back to that in a little bit. So let's, um, if they do get it correct, then we also want to update the stats and update the leaderboard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call two new functions. Um, but before we do that, let's take that score and add it to the array of scores so we can keep track of all the different scores for our average and our leaderboard. So to do that, we can use the um, score array we created, which is called score array, and we can push um, that score onto that array. And then instead of doing all the code here, we can create some helper functions. So we can eventually do one called update score, um, which will be called update score, and we won't have any parameters. And then we'll also have one called reset. So we'll write those now. So outside of the make guess, we can do um, a function called update score. And in a second, we'll also do a function called reset, which will reset the board. So it'll enable and disable the things that we need So for update score, the first thing we can do here is we can update the total wins. So for that, that was called the message. So MS, I'm sorry, that was called wins. So we can say wins dot enter HTML and we can write to that and we can say total wins. And now instead of zero, we can say plus and total wins will be the amount of scores we have in our score array. If we've added three, that means we've won three times. So we can do score array dot length. Next, we're going to want to figure out the average and update the leaderboard. So let's create an array of these three elements, which are all called leaderboard. So the array can be called something like LB for leaderboard. And here we can use document dot get elements by name, because they all have the same name, and that name was leaderboard. And the problem with that is that'll just give us them in the order of their, the times they did it. So if they got one and then three and then one again and then five, it'll be in that order. So what we wanna do is we're gonna sort that array um, and if you just use um, the sort function, it sorts basically alphabetically, so by ASCII character. So a 2 would be smaller than a 35, but a 35 um, would be smaller than a 4, which isn't correct. So what we can do is we can take score array, and we can sort it like that. But then inside of our parameters, we can use an anonymous function, and we can even do it shorter by using an arrow function, which... Um, we're not going to get into right now, but basically to sort it, you can say we have two things, A and B, and then you use this notation, which is an equal sign and a greater than sign. And basically what we want to do each time is we want to subtract A and B. So it'll find the difference in those numbers. Uh, and then this will sort it, um, in increasing order. 
Um, we also want to keep track of the sum as we loop through this array. So we can use let sum equal zero. Um, and then we can just keep a running total of this sum. And at the end, we can divide it by the length of the array. So now we can use our for loop to loop through the array. Since let i is being defined inside the loop, you can use i um, for every for loop because it doesn't exist technically outside this for loop. And now we want to loop through the entire array itself, not the leaderboard. So this would be score array at length. So i is less than score array at length, and then i plus plus. And in this loop, we're going to have an if statement because we only want to update this leaderboard for the first three times, right? If there's 10 scores and only three spots for the leaderboard, we don't want to try to update 10 things because they don't exist. So here I can say as long as i is less than the leaderboard, which we called lb dot length. And then if that's true, then we just have to write to those list items one, two, and three. So the first time through would be LB at whatever the position is, I, and then enter HTML and set that equal to whatever the score is at that um, score position that has been sorted. So score array at I. And then outside the loop, we can continue to take the sum of the array. So this will be going through everything in the score array. So we can just say the sum is plus equal to the score array at index i. So that'll keep a running total of all of our sums. So outside the for loop when we're done, now we can create the average. So we'll call it avg. And the average is simply that sum divided by the score array's length. And then we could just print that out in the average score. And we had called that AVG score in HTML for an ID. So we can take its inner HTML and then set it equal to average score colon and then concatenate AVG. And we can also round that number to two decimal points by using two fixed of two. So that should work. Um, the only thing that we don't have yet is to reset the board so we can play again, but let's try that out to make sure it works. So if we play an easy one, if we guess one, it'll say too low. If we guess three, it'll guess too high. If we guess two, it'll say correct. Total wins is one. The average is three. And now that's the first thing on my leaderboard. So we can't play again yet. So if we keep hitting guess, it'll keep saying we're right and update. So last step, let's get this research, restart function to work or reset function. So all this is because in our play function, we already come up with a new random number and we set the level again and we set score back to zero. We don't have to worry about any of that. We just have to worry about disabling and enabling these buttons. So let's start with um, the guess. So remember this guess right here is the whole HTML element. So that is called guess. So we can change the property disabled um, equal to uh, true to make that disable. Uh, we can also disable the button. So that's the guess PTN and make that disabled true as well. Uh, and you can test that out. So if we win, play, guess a three. So now these two are grayed out. So uh, you won and we can't do it. So now we have to enable these four buttons. So we'll start with the play button. So play btn dot disabled equals false. And that will enable this one. And then the easiest way to go through all three of these is just to loop through those. So for let i equal zero again, as long as i is less than the level array dot length and then I plus plus. So for each one of those, you just want to say level array at the current index, which is I dot disabled equals again to enable them, you would say false. Uh, and then the last two things, it still will have the answer from the last game and the still have the placeholder. So we could take guess again and set its value, which is where you type the answer and set it equal to just empty quotes. So nothing. And then similarly, we can do guess 
dot placeholder and then set that again equal just to nothing and that will clear that out. So if we run this, we'll hit play. The answer is two, so we'll guess one, too low, three, too high, two, correct. So now it'll update your leaderboard. Um, it will disable these, enable all this. So when you pick the level again, it will reset the score to zero from the play function and it will come up with a new random number and it will put it in the placeholder, which is 93 here. So we can guess 92, too low, 94, too high. And then let's guess 94 a couple more times just so we have a higher score. And then 93. So now this score is seven, updates total wins, updates the average score, and then it disables this stuff again so you can play again. So that is the um, basic guessing game. And from here, you can add your own features.